welcome to Rupai News. I'm Sanani Samaranayaka. And I'm Clifford Richards. First of all, look at the headlines. The President says that the government policy is to consider all people as one community. An Indo-Sri Lanka agreement has been reached to free all detained fishermen. The owner of the Turtle Research Center in Koskoda has been taken into custody. The Tamil National Alliance has been accused of engaging in a conspiracy to divide the country. The World Bank says that global economy at a turning point for the better this year. Now for those stories in detail. Today is the Dhruta Full Moon Poya Day which marks several important events in the Buddhist history including the Lord Buddha's first visit to Sri Lanka. It was on a day like today the Lord Buddha set foot on the island after nine months of his enlightenment to Buddhahood. According to Buddhist history of the Lord Buddha arrived in Mahanaga Forest Park near the Mahavali River which was known as the battlefield of Yaksha tribes. Historic law revealed that the Lord Buddha has subjugated Yaksha troops and sent them to Giri Islands. The Mahayangana Chaiti was built enshrining the hair relic presented by the Lord Buddha to God Saman. It has become venerated as a Chaiti built during the period of Lord Buddha. Religious programs including seal campaigns, meditation, almsgiving and benevolent activities were carried out in all Buddhist temples countrywide. Sri Lanka Rupani Corporation has brought a live telecast on poor day religious programs from Nagadipa Sacred Area and Palali. Dhamma sermons and community air aid services were conducted during the whole day today. <laughs> The 119th Full Moon Poya Day Dham Sermon was delivered by the Venerable Shastrapati Rajakiya Pandita Deltota Chandananda Thero at President's House in Nuralia today. The new rice harvesting festival of the Sri Dalada Maligao in Kandy was held at the Dalada Maligao premises following ancient traditions and customs. Well, the new rice harvesting festival has continued since the period of the ancient kings, praying for prosperity for the country devoid of disasters. Another objective is to gain a better harvest in the new year. Well, this is the first of the four great festivals organized annually for the sacred tooth relic. The offering of rice cooked by using the rice of new harvest obtained from the paddy fields of the Dalda Maligawa to the sacred tooth relic has been carried out as an ancient custom. It was also distributed among other Devales, the Venerable Thibbatuave Shri Medankarathero of the De and also the Devadna Nilame Pradeep Nilangadala were among those present. President Mahindra Rajapaksa says that government is committed to meet our justice to plantation areas as well as towns and villages. Everyone in the country should live with equal rights. A development program aid and providing equal benefits to the people is now being implemented countrywide. Addressing a ceremony in New Aurelia, the president reiterated that the policy of the government is to treat all the people as one community. The President was speaking at the Taipunga ceremony at President's House in Norelia today. First Lady Madam Shiradi Vikram Singh Rajapaksa grazed the occasion. The Taipunga festival based on love and compassion is a religious festival connected to agricultural society. Hindu devotees are paying tribute to sun on the Taipunga day. Offering of pujas to God's son for prosperity after harvesting the yield was a traditional custom of Hindus. The Taipunga festival depicts the connection between human beings and nature as well as unity among the community. Several cultural events based on worshipping the God's son were the highlights of the festival. Taipunga Festival Day was celebrated yesterday. Cows were being felicitated for services rendered to agriculture industry. President Rajapaksa were present at the occasion. 
Addressing the gathering, the president expressed the belief that future Taipungal festivals could be celebrated in an undivided country and devoid of drugs and alcohol. He added that the country will not be divided on racial and religious terms. He pointed out that Taipongal is being commemorated to pay gratitude to milk cows and it is helpful to get respect from gods. Hindu devotees are considered as the people of God. Singular poets have greatly valued people in plantations. He said that he has seen a photograph taken in the 1900s. It depicts a woman carrying a tea basket. A white man was sitting inside the basket. That is how the people who are speaking on women's rights and our human rights treated Sri Lankan women. He added that an environment conducive for people in plantation areas had been created to live as men of God. Financial provisions have been allocated to launch plantation housing schemes, not only in the Columbus city. He said justice has been met out to plantations, villages and towns equally, he added. <laughs> Abhisadhar <laughs> Prime Minister D.M. Jayaratnam, Mr. Arumugam Thondaman, C.B. Ratnayaka, Navindi Sanayaka, Central Province Governor Tikariko Bakadwa, Chief Minister Sarat Ekanayaka, Deputy Ministers M.K.D. Gunawardhana, Muthu Sivalingam and the Chief of the President's Staff Garmini Senarat were among those present at the ceremony. Well, ministers of India and Sri Lanka have agreed to release all fishermen and their boats in detention of both countries. Well, talks on the indo lanka fishermen's issue were held between Fisheries Minister Rajita Senarata and his Indian counterpart Sharad Power in New Delhi today. Well, Minister Rajita Senaratna and the Sri Lankan delegation met Indian Foreign Minister Salman Kurshid this morning and held discussions. Minister Kurshid has assured that they will provide full support to maintain maritime security in the Indian Ocean Zone in close proximity to the Bay of Bengal. Minister Rajita Senaratna highlighted the damage caused to the ocean zone due to illegal fishing methods. 181 Sri Lankan fishermen are in Indian custody for violating territorial waters. 34 fishing boats have also been seized by the Indian Coast Guard. 283 fishermen were taken into custody for poaching in Sri Lankan territorial waters by Sri Lanka's security forces. The two parties have agreed to release all fishermen on batches commencing tomorrow. The Sri Lankan delegation also held talks with Indian Agricultural Minister in charge of fisheries industry, Sharad Power. Today, the two sides have agreed to appoint three member high level representative teams to find long term solutions for the Indo Lanka fishermen's issue. Talks will continue tomorrow as well. Meanwhile, ten sluice gates of Parakram Samudra in Polon Narua have been further opened due to increasing of water levels at the reservoir along with heavy rain. The Disaster Management Centre informed the people living in low-lying areas in close proximity to Mahavali River up to Thamankadua, Lankapura, Manampitiya and Trinkamali to be cautious. The water level of Girithale and Mineria tanks is still rising. The rainy weather was prevailed in the central hills from this morning. Heavy fog was seen in several roads. The transportation has been disrupted as a result of the fallen earth mound this morning near the third bend of the Kandy Mayangan A26 18th Bend Road. The police took measures to clear the road. The Road Development Authority informed the motorists to be cautious when passing this area. A lighting was reported at near the Gal Temple premises in Gamad the Gamamatra today. Fifteen people have were who were in concussion had been admitted to hospital. Hospital resources said that six people have been discharged after receiving treatment. Well, Minister Vimal Veeravansu accuses the Tamil National Alliance of hatching a conspiracy to divide the country in collaboration with anti-Sri Lanka international powers. Well, their aim is to punish 
the president and the war heroes producing them before international tribunal the minister made these comments on a statement made by batiklo district tna mp pon sellarasa to a tamil newspaper Minister Vimal Veer once pointed out that this MP has made a statement claiming that he will attend the parliamentary select committee meeting to provide a political solution to the north and east following international pressure against Sri Lanka. He was of the view that the resolution against Sri Lanka should be passed in Geneva. Minister Vimal Veer once has said, adding that this person was urging to produce the president before the international tribunal and punish everyone who committed war crimes and thereafter they can come for a relevant discussion to find a political solution. It means that they will come for talks on a political solution in a victorious manner after kneeling down the Sri Lankan government using international power the LTTE is no more at present he said but international powers who nurtured the LTTE in the western world have now come forward instead of the LTTE he said <laughs> Minister Vima Aveda Vansa was speaking at the opening ceremony of the Jana Savana Heroes Village at Somavati Road in Seruvela. Houses were provided for 84 families without permanent income avenues. These people were living in the area for a period of over six years. The housing project was completed in 10 months at a cost of 19.3 million rupees. A block of one acre land will also be presented to each house recipient families. Deputy Minister Susanta Punchinilami, MKADS Gunavardhana and Governor of the Eastern Province, Rear Admiral Mohan Saujay Vikrama were present. Still on local stories, the owner of the turtle rearing center in Koskoda has been taken into custody. The police said that he was arrested for keeping turtles and on suspicion of giving a false statement. The arrest was made as the owner had violated Flora and Fauna Act. The owner of the turtle rearing center in Koskoda complained through one of his workers to the Koskoda police on the 16th December last year that an albino turtle has been missing from his center. This worker was also arrested today. The team of investigators said that two baby turtles were found on evidence given by two workers of the center. Upon search activities carried out at the house of the owner's daughter, an albino turtle and another white turtle have been found. Investigations reveal that another white turtle weighing 10 kilograms had died after eating a nest of squirrels. The police conducted comprehensive investigations into the controversial albino turtle incident. The suspect detained in Ambalangot police will be produced before the Balapitiya Magistrate Court tomorrow. The Colombo District Secretariat built in Narahampete is to be vested in the people with the participation of the President on Friday the 17th. Well, the opening ceremony was scheduled for tomorrow, but Colombo District Secretary Kamal Padmasiri said that it was postponed to Friday due to an unavoidable reason. Well, the first government agent's office was built in Peta, that was in 1853 by the British. There was high congestion in the area. Therefore, there was a long-felt need to shift the district secretariat to a suitable location. Accordingly, the construction work of the 20-storied office complex was lodged under this setup. Six stories have been completed at a cost of 1.6 billion rupees under the first stage of the project. An auditorium with a seating capacity of 400 and a conference room with a seating capacity of 110 have already been constructed. The district secretariat, which was built in accordance with the new technical methodologies, has been completely networked. 13 divisional secretariats in the district were connected to it. Timurigasya divisional secretariat is also housed in the new secretariat. Ten more stories will be built under the second stage of the district secretariat building construction project. The lands and policy planning as well as disaster management and sports division of the secretariat are to be shifted to the new building shortly. District Secretary Kamal Padmasiri said that this initiative will pave the way towards providing efficient services to around 2.9 million people living in the Colombo district. Must Media Information Minister Kehli Rambukwala says that the national policy on digitalization of Sri Lankan cinema is to be announced next month. Issuing a statement, the minister noted that the government has taken several measures to uplift the 67-year-old local cinema. 
The United Front government has set up Sri Lanka State Film Corporation in 1971 with the aim of taking over the local cinema which was under three private companies by the government. Singala Cinema's golden era emerged during the period of 1970s. Local cinema have to face many problems along with the implementation of the recommendations in the Nilavira report by the then government in 2001. President Mahindra Rajapaksa has committed himself to protect the local cinema industry through Mahindra Chintana policy in 2005. Several measures to improve the local cinema had been taken afterwards. These included the increasing of tax concession given for film production to 350,000 rupees from 250,000 rupees, the renewal of VAT and taxes for importing cinema equipment, and to grant tax holidays for the investments in the cinema industry. 35 cinema halls, which were closed by year 2005, had been renovated and modernized under the present government. Mass Media Information Ministry Secretary Dr. Charita Hera told Rupwani that several measures have been taken to implement plans for the progress of industry giving professional dignity for cinematographers. He added that the previous government has taken the authority to the private sector to distribute films. Many people believe that his action had created a great impact against the improvement of cinema industry. The challenge before the government at present is to take over the management of the monopoly of distributing films. Another challenge was to decide on the number of film distribution boards. The restructuring of the Film Corporation for Digital Films was also a challenge. Arrangements have been made to overcome these three challenges on the directions of the President. The government has given concessions to import film equipment in previous years through budget proposals, he said. Well, 96 Sri Lankan Buddhists have entered priesthood in Thailand. The ceremony was held at the Wat Prayur Vansawa Temple in Bangkok. They received ordination in accordance with the Thai customs. These Sri Lankan Buddhists participated in a two-week meditation training before entering into priesthood. Chancellor of the Chula Lankara University, the Venerable Professor Dharma Kosajan Thero presided over the ceremony. It was organized by the director of the Thai Sri Lanka Buddhist Cultural Center, the Venerable Rasagala Sivali Thero. The new Security Forces Commander of Jaffna Major General Uday Pera paid homage at the Nagadip Rajma Vihare today. He also inquired into future development of the temple. Major General Uday Pereira called on the chief priest of Nagadipa Temple, the Venerable Namadagala Padumakitti Tissathero, on receive his blessings. He told the Nayakathero that necessary support for future development on the temple will be provided promptly. He also presented a memento to the chief priest. Well, the funeral of award-winning veteran, literary and arts critic and senior professor A.V. Surabira will take place at the General Cemetery, Burala tomorrow at 4 p.m. The body of the late Professor Surabira is now lying at his residence number 36, Yahampat Mawata, Maharagama. The late Professor Surabira made a yeoman service for the development of literary and creative writing of Sri Lanka and he has written more than 30 books. His books include short stories, novels, literary criticisms, analysis of all our writings, cultural education, etc. It was the late Professor Surabira who pioneered the postgraduate and diploma courses on journalism and mass media at the Sri Jayavardhanapura University. Professor A.B. Surabira passed away at the age of 83. SLP General Secretary Maitri Palasiris, Senior Cultural Affairs Minister T.B. Ekanayaka and several scholars were among the large gathering of persons who paid their last respects to the late Professor Suravira. The Durutu Mahaparahara of the historic Kalani Raj Mahavihare paraded the streets last night. Hundreds of thousands of devotees converged on Kalaniya to view the Parahara. The chairman of the Dai Kathera opposition leader Rani Vikram Singh placed the relics casket on the Tusker before the commencement of the Perahara. Up country, low country and Sabragama dancing troops added colour to the Kalani Perahara organised on the directions of the chief priest of the temple, the venerable professor Kolupite Mahinda Sangaraki Tathero.
Well, five years after the global financial crisis, the world economy is showing signs of bouncing back this year. Pulled along by recovery in high-income economies is the World Bank's latest global economic prospects report issued today. Well, developing country growth is also firming thanks in part to the recovery in high-income economies as well as moderating but still strong growth in China. Growth prospects for 2014 are, however, sensitive to the tapering of monetary stimulus in the United States, which began earlier this month, and to the structural shifts taking place in China's economy. The report forecasts growth in developing countries to pick up from 4.8% in 2013 to a slower than previously expected 5.3% this year, 5.5% in 2015 and 5.7% in 2016, while the pace is about 2.2 percentage points lower than during the boom period of 2003 to 2007. The slow growth is not a cause for concern, they say. Almost all of the difference reflects a cooling off of unsustainable turbocharged pre-crisis growth which very little due to an easing of growth potential in developing countries well thanks Javid and uh, that's where we end with my news to enjoy the rest of the programs take care good night good night